Welcome back to another episode of Rock Boys Football. The Florida State Seminoles land one of the more intriguing wide receiver prospects in the 2024 class and four-star wide receiver Elijah Moore. And you take a look at his film, get into the highlights a little, which we will in a second. This is a guy that massive, massive catch radius, dominated the seven-on-seven scene, but you see it translate to Friday nights on the high school football field, a guy that can go up, make plays, and also create separation extremely well for someone 6'4", 190. And you take a look at the wide receivers Florida State is kind of prioritizing. And you go and get Hakeem Williams in the 2023 class, you're going to be trotting out guys like Keon Coleman and Johnny Wilson, some serious size and juice to this Florida State wide receiver room that before like last year was kind of a sore spot in Florida State's roster. Now, before we get into it, just want to say, Thank you to you guys and the Florida State fans. We've talked a ton of transfer power for Florida State. We've previewed that team heading into 2023. One of our favorite teams heading into the season. You guys want to go check that out as well. Uh, I'd love to hear your thoughts on that. But if you do enjoy the content, consider subscribing to the channel. We're going to get into Elijah Moore and then take a look at this 2024 class and how it's coming along. We haven't gotten a chance to talk a ton of Florida State on the recruiting trail in 2024. But one of those teams that quietly kind of kind of setting themselves up for a top 10, maybe even top eight class of some dominoes fall the right the right way for Florida State. Now I want to get into Elijah Moore first before we go on to the class and get into the film a little bit because this is a guy that I'm not going to pretend like I'm a genius scout at the high school level, but I can see where his offers were from. And he was a priority for Ohio State. And Ohio State has done a phenomenal job scouting wide receivers and developing wide receivers. And this is a massive recruiting win. When you talk about going up toe-to-toe with Brian Hartline and the Ohio State recruiting staff and winning a priority wide receiver for both these programs, this is a really good get. And getting into the film, like this is one of the more fun highlight reels to watch. And we're going to watch a couple plays, and you're just going to get a sense of what Elijah Moore brings to the table. First, the catch radius, the frame, 6'4", so comfortable going up for those contested catches and really physical. And imagine if he fills out that frame a little bit. Like you're, you're looking at a bona fide stud at this wide receiver. Gets it done on special teams, too. He is really physical. Like you'll see him come down and block as well. We'll get to a few of those plays, which I like a lot. But he's a guy that creates separation, really, really clean release, and it's just super comfortable tracking the football when it's in the air. Uh, just a, You're going to see some catches on this reel that are just absolutely insane. But the 6'4", like creating separation. I mean, this dude moves extremely smooth. For a guy who's six four, and you check out, we'll pause it real quick. You check out the seven on seven highlights of him. Like he is going up and making some ridiculous catches. The hands, the ball skill, the catch radius, it's all there for a kid in Elijah Moore. And again, a, a position that I feel like before last year, Florida State just really struggled in. They're starting to load up on some talent. There you see it again. Massive ball skills, phenomenal hands. And at some point, they're just like, hey, we're gonna throw the football up to you and just let you go make a play. Really good body control, toe in the sideline as well. So much to like about what Elijah Moore brings to the table. Now, I want to talk a little bit about this 2024 class because it's coming along really well, right? You land Landon Thomas, the flip commitment from Georgia, a really, really nice pass catcher. Cam Davis, one of the top running backs in the class. But Luke Cromino, this is a guy that we haven't talked much about and continues to rise out. Mike Norvell took his commitment relatively early in this process. He's going to be special for Florida State. And I that's no this on Brock Glenn in the 2023 class, but I think Luke Cromilk is going to be the next stud quarterback for Florida State. 6'4", 185. He played like safety and wide receiver in his younger days. I believe his junior year was the first time starting for Luke Cromilk. He lit it up, goes to the Elite 11 finals, catches a lot of the scouts' eyes. You see him sitting at 108 on that national composite, according to 24-7 Sports. I wouldn't be surprised if he jumps up in the top 50 and kind of pushes for that five-star status because he is a guy that just continues to rise through the rankings. And as he plays a little bit more quarterback, you're really excited about what he brings to the table. Again, 6'4", massive arm. We haven't talked Luke Cromnok, but he is a, he, he's the real deal, in my opinion, from after hearing what he did at the Elite 11. And then you round it out with just the way McCoy, I, I think because they take now Elijah Moore, you have Landon Thomas, you have Tawaski Abrams, I would guess he's going to play in that secondary room, but he's another just kind of freak athlete. We'll get you into the program. We'll see what you are. And then you look down and Didi Holmes, that's a really, really nice get they got to kick off the month of July. Ricky Knight, 
beating out Miami for both these cats. That's Florida State putting together a really good class, but kind of the fun part when you take a look at what this Florida State class can look like. And again, we've talked a couple of programs where this is a Florida State team that I, the bona fide top eight, potentially even top five team in the country. If Florida State plays the way I think they should play during the season in 2023, I wouldn't be surprised if they're going to have a phenomenal July in terms of commitments. But I wouldn't be surprised if t- recruits take a look at what Florida State puts on the field in 2023 and says, this program's going in the right direction. And maybe they kind of jump or flip their commitments later too. But talking about some of the guys that they got to land, if you're talking about a top eight, top 10 class, LJ McRae probably starts it off. Like this is a, a freakish defensive lineman who again is kind of a riser in the rankings, played a little tight end to er, to start off his high school career. Again, he was six, six, two, six. You're looking at him like, dude, you belong on the defensive line. Absolute freak. He's one kind of rising up the rankings as well. You have Landon Thomas in the ship, and we're looking at the talent that they've had on campus. Jonathan Daniels, all trending to Florida State. He's one of the best offensive line prospects in this class. Mikai Danzi, another guy that's trending Florida State's way. They got a lot of talent that's trending this way, and I kind of want to go down to who they had on campus on Friday, June 16th, and this is kind of the crown jewel of your class. Charles Lester, one of the top cornerbacks in the class, I mean, you're really looking at potentially if Luke Cromwell can push that five-star status, you're looking at potentially three five-stars in this 2024 class. That's already a really deep class with a couple, well, not a couple, more than a couple blue chip recruits. This is a class that I think could have a really good month of July. But again, when we're talking about this class and when it matters, when it matters to have this class set in stone in December, when it's time to sign on that dotted line to where you're going to play football, I really do think you're looking at one of the top classes in the in the ACC for sure, but maybe in the whole entire country. And again, this is a, a program that hasn't necessarily recruited. You had Mike Norvell take over. There was some turmoil early. Mike Norvell has that culture in, in, in place, right? Like Jordan Travis, Jared Verse, those guys decide. Johnny Wilson, you could add to that. Those guys decide to come back for a special year in 2023. It's pretty clear the, the culture now is in place with Mike Norvell. Now it's time to start bringing in these top 10, top eight classes. And you combine the culture that Mike Norvell and the player development we're seeing combined with bringing in top 10 classes. That's kind of the recipe for Florida State getting back to where kind of I like, I think a lot of Florida State fans think Florida State should be. Again, this is a program that I think is on the rise. They're about to have a phenomenal season in 2023. And I think they're going to finish with a really, really good class in 2024. Appreciate you guys checking us out. Again, Florida State hasn't necessarily been in the headlines, and maybe we haven't been giving them enough credit for what they're doing on the 2024 trail, but you're going to take a look at this class in December, and I think we're going to be looking at a top 10 class. Appreciate you guys rocking with the boys on July 4th. Hope you guys are having a phenomenal holiday weekend, and we'll talk to you all later. Peace.